Uh, all right, brilliant. Uh, today I'm going to talk about phishing and um, its relevance, most importantly the impact that it can have and all the damage that you can do with phishing. Now phishing has been around in the scene since uh, quite some time and uh, the thing about phishing is that it's, it's gotten more advanced each day. Uh, I'll also illustrate some of the, some of the famous websites and uh, Twitter accounts that have been hacked because of phishing. All right, let's start. Phishing, I'm sure most of you already know about this because um, you know I see a lot of young faces here. Phishing is basically using spoofed email to try and uh, get the victim to do things that you want him to do. And this usually involves acquiring his username, password, his, his credit card numbers. And this leads to very, very mass amounts of thefts. So, this is the standard definition. Phishing attacks use spoofed emails and fraudulent websites. Also, websites are used. Fake websites are created. We will uh, divulge into um, how you can identify fake websites, how you can uh, spot what is real, what is fake. Now, this is an email which is, which says, which claims that it's from Citibank. Uh, I'm not sure if you can read it, but um, all right, I'll just give you a brief idea of what it says. It says we recently noticed one of one or more attempts to log in into your Citibank account from a foreign IP, and we have reasons to believe that there, uh, there was attempts to compromise it with brute forcing your PIN number. Now, basically, what the what the person is trying to do here is he's trying to convince the victim that he was attacked, that someone was trying to steal from him. So now it's it's human tendency that you try to think that. Uh, someone's trying to steal from me, so I need to do something about it quickly. I need to do something now. What do I do? I mean, there's a state of panic that you uh, get induced to, which the attacker here is trying to manipulate in you. It later goes on to say that by now we use many techniques to verify the accuracy of the information our users provide us when they register on a site, etc., etc. And then it gives a link right here. Click here to protect yourself from fraudulent activity. To make citybank.com the most secure site, users will be registered to CitySafe, etc., etc., etc. So what it does is that it tries to make you believe that you have been attacked. It uses this tendency in you that you, you will immediately do something about it. You will panic. And then it leads you to believe that this particular URL is genuine. It's safe. But it's not. It leads to a fraudulent website, which I'll show you. This is the phishing pop-up. As you can see, it looks exactly like what a, a normal Citibank um, login page would look like. Now, uh, I don't know if you can see closely, the URL up here, it's not Citibank. It's web.da-us. The legitimate site, open in the background. Okay, that's the legitimate site, and this is the phishing pop-up. I'm sorry. So now, what it will do is, when you enter the correct PIN number, it will refuse to take it, although it will store it in the background. The fish uh, refuses to accept uh, the bogus credit card number. The, and, and basically that's how uh, you will be fooled into believing that uh, your account has been um, tried to be um, stolen and it will get your credentials from you. Now, the impact of phishing is huge. A lot, a lot of data, a lot of um, credentials, money, all kinds of private information gets stolen because of phishing. Now, uh, the annual loss due to computer crime was estimated to be 67.2 billion. This is a little old, this statistic. And I am very sure it's a lot more than this right now. Now, most Indian banks, this is something to worry about. Most Indian banks have been affected by this. All popular ones, in fact. I see everything. I'm sorry, Punjab National Bank is on there because I see it's also a partner. <laughs> well, I should have removed that anyway. Uh, okay, I'll show you a, a, a certain a number of examples how phishing takes place and how you're led to believe that you will be uh, you you're entering a safe site, a genuine site, and you will be fooled into revealing your credentials. So. 
Uh, dear customer, this is your official notification from Access Alerts. Previous notifications have been sent to the billing contact assigned to this account. As the primary contact, you must renew the service listed below or it will be deactivated. Now, what they usually do is they they prompt you to take some action immediately. They, they, what they'll say is, do this or, or something will happen, something bad will happen. So they use this technique and they try to make you believe that you, you need to do something about it right now. So they basically urge you to go click on something, some malicious link or some uh, a link to a, a fraudulent website. So here it is. This is the website. Um, I again, I'm not sure if you can see, but the URL is has nothing to do with Access Bank, although it looks exactly like a Access Bank. It lasts for your login ID, password, transaction ID, etc., etc. Looks very real, looks very authentic, but is not. Again, um, this is from Yes Bank. Your account is about to expire. Please renew, etc., etc. Click on this so and so URL, be redirected. Here it is, looks very real, but um, again, here it says koreanholiness.org, nothing to do with the S Bank. So you need to be real careful, especially with uh, all these emails that you get from banks or, or your own account, say your own Google account, your own uh, Facebook these days gets hacked very easily using the, these techniques. Now again, another which um, which allegedly is from HDFC. Even even the even the email address right here, service at site online sec dot biz doesn't sound like HDFC to me. Okay, so the mail from ICICI Bank goes something like this: uh, Dear customer, phishing is um, a common form of internet privacy. It is used to steal personal confidential information, etc. It it basically it. ICICI Bank. Now, uh, of course, banks have identified that these attacks are very prevalent and uh, they're very common these days. So there are measures that they take. There is a new um, authentication system which is called one-time password. Uh, I, I'm sure most of you have uh, made online transactions recently. So what it does is it will generate a one-time password which will be available only to you. And the moment you use that password, the password expires. So it's basically another level of authentication. It's also called two-factor authentication, which is now being implemented in all major um, mail providers, your um, social networking sites. Twitter has it. Gmail has it. Uh, Facebook does not have it, sadly. Not, not for Indians. I don't know why. Um, but they have their own, their own um, mechanism to detect if someone else is logged in from a, from a, different, um, from a different source, from a different country from a different location. So, so they have their uh, fair share of um, defense mechanisms, mechanisms but um, two-factor authentication is not there. So anyway, uh, it tells you that uh, never, never ever give out your credit card number and your CBB number to anyone. Your bank will never ask you for that on email. Please remember that. You will never be asked for your credit card number and your CBB number on email. Um, other do's and don'ts include the complete URL in the address bar, like I showed you. Always take care that the link that you're trying to open looks like it's come from that source. Like if, if it's an access bank URL, if it's an access bank email, uh, the URL should redirect to somewhere on access bank's website, not some completely third party website which, which doesn't look real at all. So you have to be careful about that. Uh, the most important point here is point number three, HTTPS. What HTTPS is, um, well, HTTPS is, yes, yes, very good, very nice, lovely. Um, so that's the secure channel for your transactions. Always make sure that your transactions, online, online transactions, even your, even your login uh, pages on, on Facebook, Twitter, they're also now HTTPS. In fact, uh, Facebook has HTTPS browsing everywhere. Like even if you're opening a picture or if, even if you're messaging someone, everything is now, uh, it goes through HTTPS. You can, you can enable that in your uh, security settings, I think. So, so yeah, make sure HTTPS is on the URL because that generally specifies that the transaction that you're going to make is going to be completely safe. 
or secure as S stands for. And again, original ICICI bank login page will never ask customers upfront for transaction passwords. Never. Okay, so what will you do if if your um, if your credit card details have been stolen? What what do you do if you have been hacked or you know if 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 there's been a case of theft from you? So if you feel that you have been fished or you have provided your personal information at a place you should not have, please carry out the following in, uh, immediately as a damage mitigation measure. Change your password immediately. And this goes this is a very generalized uh, measure. You 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 must do this. For every kind of hack, I mean, if if you think that your Facebook has been compromised, because this happens a lot amongst us, I know that you leave your profile open somewhere, and someone will just type something, some some funny stuff or something offensive, you know, you know that happens. So, if you think your profile has been hacked or been compromised, always change your password immediately. That's the first thing you do always, and that doesn't just apply for banks. Always change your password if you feel something has. Um, again. In this case, check your account statement. Make sure no um, funny, fishy transactions have taken place in uh, without your knowledge. And um, if there is something, then you report it to the bank immediately. Okay. So this is a phishing mail for ICICI. As you can see, it says, "Dear customer," another very big hint. If it doesn't say your name, it usually means. It's a generalized email which is being sent to everyone on earth. So it it it's a it's a giveaway sometimes. Be a customer, ICICI Bank. Um, we apologize for the inconvenience, etc., etc., etc. Customers are hereby advised to ensure that errors are not um, occur. Please keep uh, etc. Whatever it says, and then in the end it says, please visit the link below to access your ICICI Bank and login for verification. So now it's asking you to verify. Now as you can see, if you hover your mouse over this link. Right here, you can see that here it says uh, what is it? Dannycreations.fr. That's a France domain. Now, why would France have anything to do with ICICI Bank? Big giveaway. Always, always hover your mouse. Make sure that uh, you you check which link you are going to before you actually open the link. All right. So there, Dannycreations.fr/images. Nothing to do with ICICI, but it looks very real. Yeah, there's even a Tata Nano over there, so you know they've tried to make a genuine effort to make it look real. So that's one giveaway. Now most uh, most modern web browsers, and by modern I mean Firefox and Chrome. I I will strictly not speak about Internet Explorer, but uh, most modern web browsers uh, can detect phishing. Most of them, and not not flawlessly, not completely. But there's a decent enough uh, algorithm that can help you sometimes. So now Firefox here says that uh, the website at dannycreations.fr has been reported as web forgery, has been blocked based on your security preferences. Gives you an option, get me out of here, or it tells it uh, you can you can find out why it was blocked. Uh, Chrome has a decent one as well. Now in case you ever think that an email is fishy or it doesn't seem like um, something that has come from someone real. What you can do is you can always check email headers, now, and this is trust me, this is very good advice. Email headers will usually give you all the information that you need. Where the email is coming from, what is the time zone there, what is the language that's being used on the computer, all kinds of data. So here, as you can see, in between there's a, a domain of kuwaitnet.net. Again, very fishy, uh, and this is actually uh, a very good mechanism to to even uh, detect fake mail from some, from people who you know your own friends. We do this a lot in office. We sometimes uh, play pranks with our own colleagues. What we do is we uh, we 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 send out letters of termination to our colleagues, which are signed by our MD. But uh, yeah, so you can always check. Uh, there's a lot of information right here. If you look closely, of course, it looks a lot of it. It looks like a lot of um, gen, like a junk data. But uh, you can see right here. If you can, you can very well see that there's a, a very fishy domain here, and uh, it doesn't. It's it's not coming from Hotmail. So yeah. Countermeasures. What do you do if 
if you if you have been attacked or I mean how do you protect yourself from phishing so do not pro uh, provide personal information or information about your organization to unknown persons this is again generalized someone may may not try to um, extract information from you so you have to be careful sometimes never give out private data of your of your organization to people you don't know about to people you don't trust now as i say humans i mean as much as security that we try to implement there is always one weakest link any guesses what that weakest link is insecurity in this entire domain cyber security what is the weakest link the weakest link in security anyone yes correct human beings humans are always the weakest link because there is always a way to get through the most secure systems by exploiting a human or by extracting information that you need or relying on him to make an error and phishing is one of those errors now phishing is something that can can lead to an entire organization's network being compromised if some one of you are um, targeted by someone and if you open say some uh, a malicious link or a malicious program some kind of malware if it gets onto your system from your system it spreads to the network from the network it spreads to the entire server so so the humans the humans are the weakest link so it's very important that you that you are aware of these things and 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 you know what to do how to prevent yourself from being attacked so do not reveal personal or financial information do not send sensitive information over the internet before before checking a website security if you are unsure whether an email request is legit, legitimate try to verify it by contacting the company directly if you think there's some something something is fishy call the bank call them ask them uh, do you need me to provide uh, credentials over email they will say no of course not so there you say okay now this is uh, a sort of quiz which uh, you need to participate in uh, this is a snapshot of uh, an email which say say you receive this email for example and uh, just for generalization sake your name is jane do uh, i mean the females are jane do the males are john do it's it's a terminology that people use in morgues and you know the 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 anonymous uh, i mean someone whose identity is not known is always john do the female is jane do okay so say you uh, say the girls here are jane do the guys are john do <laughs> uh, dear jane do your credit card on file um, with paypal will expire soon to avoid any disruptions in your service please update your credit card information on file etc etc how to update gives you a link and yeah that's it so fake or real how why okay it it does say us.paypal.com but it redirects to jendo at sonic world okay okay the, the the url looks fine i mean there's nothing that uh, much of a giveaway why all right let's 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 just move on so that you you get the feel of it this is a fish why uh, you may have been fooled as the email uses your name jendo here now this is a little more advanced phishing um, attackers will never they never use your real name i mean they they never use your uh, your own name i mean if if you get an email which says dear customer then you can you can uh, make an educated guess that this this has gone out to everybody it's not specified for you but here of course since uh, this is a targeted attack that's something known as spear phishing where you are targeted like the 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 scope of the target is very narrow and it's you so you are targeted and when you are targeted your name sometimes will be there so you uh, it's one of the signs where uh, which which can tell you if the email is a fish or not but um, it's not always reliable here of course your name is there so don't don't get carried away though okay uh, there are some misspellings uh, i'm sorry you can't see from back there credit has not been spelled properly now banks will never have sp uh, spelling mistakes emails from banks or any professional organization there will never be spelling mistakes so that's one very very uh, big giveaway um now these instructions right here are very vague so 
that's also a bit um, you know you you can you can tell that a bank will never give you such vague information Just log in update and click save and then it gives you a link uh, it takes you to com-stz.info you can see the site right here like if if you hover your mouse over that url you you'll be able to see the link down there so the link is not real uh, it, it's a fish definitely Okay, snapshot number two, we recently revised our online access agreement and e-sign consent to make it easier for you to understand. Now this email is very straightforward. It doesn't ask you to do anything, it just gives you information and that's about it. It just tells you that if you have any questions, just email us. Um, site looks alright. So what do you think? Fish or real? Why? Which one? No, no, that, that is fine. Look, uh, I'll tell you what. It's from Wells Fargo Online and the website is Wells Fargo Online. I'm sorry you can't see, but uh, the website seems all right. Yes, this is not a fish. Because mainly it doesn't tell you to do anything. Even if it is a fish, what's going to happen? It, it's not telling you to click on a link. It's not telling you to give out your password or it's not telling you that your ex uh, account is going to expire or Something like that. It, it, it's not giving you any kind of a, a, a threat in a way that if you don't do this, then this will happen. So yeah, this is legit. This is fine. Many reasons. Um, it doesn't have your name, although uh, again, it's a very generalized email, so it doesn't necessarily have to have your name. It's just instructions which will go out to everyone. So there's nothing to be uh, panicky about. So this email itself is informational. There is nothing that it asks you to do. Do not expect to receive an email such as this from your bank. If you don't expect to receive something, then you always call the bank. The links are fine. As you can see, wellsfargo.com. Wellsfargo, it's from Wellsfargo, so it's Wellsfargo. And of course, there's HTTPS. Very small link. Um, and it usually tells you that you're safe. I mean, it's not a fish. OK, snapshot three, tax refund. Oh, there's a form in an email, so be careful. This is a form in the email itself. It's not telling you to go anywhere. It's in the email. The form, a form in an email. How often do you see that? Now this asks you to give your security, your, I mean your your credit card number, your CVV number, of course this, uh, and it claims it's from Internal Revenue Service. So yes, no fish, yes, always. Okay, IRS does not send out email to anyone requesting that you supply any private or financial information. Number one, I'm just going to read it out because I know you can't see it from there. The email is not addressed to you. There is no information shown that indicates that the, that the sender knows who you are. So this is not a targeted attack only to you. CVV code, it is, it's asking you for your CVV code. Now there, uh, remember, CVV codes are only uh, required when you're making a transaction. That's the only time you'll be required to give your CVV code. Otherwise, no, you don't require to give it anywhere. You, you don't just give out CVV codes just to verify your identity. No, it doesn't work like that. And um, it says no self-respecting organization would ask for this type of information via an email form. Like I said, forms on emails never. Snapshot 4, uh, discover card. This is not a promotional email. Please call us immediately at this number regarding the recent activity of your Discover card. We are available 24/7, etc. Please disregard if this. Uh, please disregard this email if you've already if you've already called us. Now this is grammatically incorrect. Please disregard this email if you have already called us. That doesn't sound right. So this is definitely a fish. Grammatical error number one. Um, why would an email from Discover come from Prodigy email account? The email account here is Prodigy.net. Obvious giveaway. Uh, email was not addressed to you. There is no information that would indicate that sender knows you. For example, there is no account ending with XXX message. Usually when um, the email is for you, particularly for you, uh, it will give you the last few digits of your account number just to tell you that they know who you are. I mean, th that email is for you. So many, many signs, uh, an 800 number, same one as listed on their physical mail. Um, the 
the number again verify the number if it if it's asking you to call a number verify that that number actually belongs to them now uh, okay yes oh i'm sorry uh, yeah no worries uh, that number might be which one that number might be senior number and they might be having revenue 1800 yeah yeah uh, now senior number when people call Exactly, exactly. This this kind of thing also happens. If you call, uh, there are very high rates attached to these kind of numbers. It's a premium number, as sir said. Now you'll be charged a hell lot of money for that, and they'll basically end up making money. So even before dialing numbers, you have to be very care uh, very careful. Uh, just recently, I, I was using my uh, phone and uh, I, I I downloaded this um, antivirus app called Lookout. What uh, and before dialing a number. it actually asked me that do you want me to scan this phone number so i thought what could what could possibly be um, there to scan for in a phone number but apparently phone numbers also can be very malicious so you have to be careful um, and the app i mentioned was lookout um, it's an app for android it's it's pr pretty decent i'd recommend it for all kinds of security for your phones so yes that's it regarding account now this is directed to you regarding account uh, 669 is are the last three digits of your account thank you for requesting um, online statements with bank of choice co and doesn't say anything uh, okay it asks you to click on a website uh, it gives a url click on the personal link sign on and then from main menu click on products and services scroll to the bottom of the page and click on the statement to view the statement I'm sorry. If you have any questions, concerns, please don't hesitate to contact us by calling whatever number. So, fish legit. Which one is it? Any guess? Sir? Very nice. You're learning. Uh, email was not addressed to you in this case, John Doe. It was not. Um, they didn't give out your name, but they gave out your account number, which means the email was for you. Did you recently make this request? In other words, would it be reasonable for you to expect this message? Yes, maybe you did. And uh, the from is not very clear from the message. Uh, you can't make out if the 